God's holy word revealed to me by the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that gave the word to men of God, that spoke it and wrote it, that same Holy Spirit is on Kubis and in Kubis to teach, in upon me to hear, and I'm going to bear good fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. I, I really think we all desire to be what God wants us to be. I don't think we, we just want to come to church to come to church to get our consciences seared. I think in every person there is a desire to really be what God intended us to be. Right? So what are we touching on lately is in Exodus chapter 3 when God appeared unto Moses there in the desert in the bush that was burning. And God said to him, you know, go set my people free. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses said, but who shall I say who sent me? And God said, go tell them I am that I am. Go tell them I am has sent you. And we discussed that the I am is not only the blank check that you will write in what God wants to give to you. You know, normally it's I am Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord your provider, your, your healer. I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your, your, your provider. I am Jehovah Shalom, the Lord your peace. I am the Lord Roy, the Lord your shepherd. And we want to put in the I am, we want to put in what we can get from God. The I am is more than just getting, it's being. It is what God says you can be. I am a child of God, John 1, 12. I am a son of God, Galatians. I am more than a conqueror, Romans 8, 37. I can do all things. I am. So it's not just only what I can get from God. It is what I can be in God and what I can be because Christ is in me. Paul says in Galatians 2, 20, it's no longer I that liveth, but it is Christ that's alive in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So there is a greater life for us to live. And Paul is grabbing for something. In Philippians 3 verse 10, he says, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I'm going to grab that for which Christ has grabbed me. So God didn't just save us to get us out of hell and get us into heaven. God has saved us to be something on the face of this earth. We are supposed to rule and have dominion. That was God. God's plan right from the start. Let us make man in our image and after our own likeness. Let them rule and ha let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth. So we are the people of dominion, and it's time we realize who we are so that we can stand up and say, I am. We've got the earnest of the Spirit. The word they earnest is the first fruits. The word they is the deposit. We've got a deposit of the Spirit to be something. The Spirit wants to take us to a higher place where we can exactly be what God intended us to be. And that is, Father, I pray that they will be one. Even as I and you are one, they in us and we in them, that the world can know that you have sent me. It's time for the Christians to rise up, arise and shine, your light has come, look like God, talk like God, be like God, you are a son of God, John chapter 10 verse 34, Jesus says, does not your law say that I say you are God's, if he said this of them upon to whom the word of God came, is it then too much if God has sent us to stand up and say I am a son of God, and we know that Romans chapter 8, creation is waiting creation is groaning and we who have the first fruits of the Spirit are groaning together with creation to come forth as the manifested sons of God. What is the Son? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So if we're going to be manifested as sons of God, that means we're going to be manifested as the Christ of God. In other words, we're going to come forth in the very anointing of the Most High God. And we will be able to say with Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to heal the brokenhearted to open the eyes of the blind to do something on the face of the earth you are anointed you are supposed to be a son of God in this earth today you are the soul of the earth you are the light of the world you are a city that sits on a hill and you cannot be eaten you are something amen, amen. tell somebody you are something man okay so 
with that in mind, uh, 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 something. <laughs> okay? If I do not come to the place where I know who I am, say who I am, start manifesting who I am in Christ, I am frustrating the grace of God. I received it in vain. The grace of God is not to get you out of hell and get you into heaven. The grace of God is, he says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 and 13, his intention was the full equipping of the saints. Till we all reach unity in the faith. Till we all come to the stature of the measure of the saints same size as Christ himself, the very image of the Son of God. That was why grace came to you. So uh, I think I said something like this. If I say I am, and I put negative stuff behind it, okay? The minute I say I am, oh, I am so weak. Oh, I am so sick. The minute I say something negative, I'm going totally against God and against His Word. Because He says, let the weak say, I am strong. So if I'm weak, I'm not supposed to say I'm weak. I'm supposed to say I'm strong. And if I speak the Word of God, God comes to my aid. But if I say I am, and I put behind it the Word of God, God is obliged God is mm, not forced to, but he loves to just manifest if I say, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. His strength is perfected in my weaknesses. God's strength is perfected. I am strong. I am more than a conqueror. I am what the word of God says I am. I am a child of God. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. I am cleansed. I am sanctified. I am justified. I am righteous. I am what the Bible says I am. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus. He says, You don't have to belong to the Catholic Church, achieve something great in life, be dead 300 years, and then be made a saint. The minute you become righteous because of the blood of Jesus. Now remember 2 Corinthians 5.21 says God made him who knew no sin to be made sin for us that we could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The minute you've been made righteous because of Jesus Christ, you are a saint. Okay? So you don't have to achieve anything. It's what he achieves. Saint only means Either holy or blameless. So the word saint actually means holy. Or it means blameless. Say, I am a saint. Which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So, if we're going to read this chapter for myself, I am... Okay, you don't have to say it. I'm going to repeat it over and over. I, I am preaching on the I am confessions. So I'm going to stop and give you the opportunity to confess. If you want to be part of the I am confessions, you can take part. The I am confessions is not what I can only get from God. It's much more. It's what I am in God. But it's not a I am just believing. It's a confession. Go tell them. Go say to them, I am that I am. Tell them for the second time, I am has sent you. When Jesus Christ came on the scene, he didn't make them wonder. He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the fountain of living water. I am the light of the world. Jesus didn't say it silently and made the note thereof and send it around to his favorite followers. No, he said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the bread of life. If you eat my flesh, he said it. 
Church of Jesus Christ, we need to say, I am. I am. I am a saint. I am in Christ Jesus. Okay, so I am in Christ Jesus. Now, my very first scripture that I got after my salvation was 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. If any man be in Christ Jesus, Jesus. He is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay, uh, okay. If you don't know what I'm preaching, I am trying to tell you that every time we use a I am confession, there's a whole lot of stuff that's coming with that one word. And we're going to do Ephesians 1 to say, see if somebody will grab it and say, Man, then I'm going to read this word say, I am a saint. Saint Quibus. I am in Christ Jesus. So, you don't see me. If you look at me, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So, we need to say, if you have seen me. Oh, but we're scared to say it. Jesus wasn't scared to say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And Jesus said, go show. Okay, so need, we need to say, oh, where can I find Jesus? Oh, yes. am I Jesus Christ? No, but I am alive in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I am one with Him, one with the Father and one with the Spirit. I am dead, yet I am alive. I died with Christ. I was risen with Christ. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hmm? Now, I had a story when I just started preaching. Maybe I should tell the story for those who want more stories than preaching. I love the word more than stories, but maybe the story. There was, you know, when I was young, they had, you know, all these funny like bullfrog competitions. Bullfrog. It's a big, groot. Makulu kulu para para. Peak. And then they had these, these, these bullfrog competitions where they set them at a line. Now, the bullfrog doesn't know to go that way. He's, his trainer just trained him some stuff, you know. And they had like these 12 bullfrogs and there was a line, you know, not far, about 20 meters. And then these bullfrogs have to jump. And the first bullfrog over the line... You know, the guy then won a prize, you know. And I remember it wasn't big prizes, you know. It was like, you know, a casserole where you put your food, you know, something like that. And I remember, now, here are all these people. And that one guy had a harmonica, you know. And, that, that, and the other one, you know. You know, everybody had something that made this bullfrog jump. And there was this one old lady. She pulled up a dress and she had an English concertina, you know. And she... And he, so every bullfrog was trained to the sound of the trainer. Now imagine, you know, you spend months to train your bullfrog. You know, you spend months to train your bullfrog. Now all the bullfrogs line up. You know, and then the guy have the whistle and he's going to whistle and then the bullfrogs are going to charge you. Just when they start jumping. Your bullfrog turns into a canary and it flies away. <laughs> now that's the word used there in 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man is in Christ, he is a new species. Yeah. Of a total different kind. You are not the same man. The sins I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to say, I say, there's got to come a change. I am in Christ Jesus. Say it. Okay, so if I am in Christ Jesus, then 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, then I am. Okay, so if I, okay, you got to say it. I said it. I am a saint. I am in Christ Jesus. I am. You see, but so many people struggle with the old man because they never confess I am. You say, they believe. What are you? Oh, no, I'm a Christian. 
How many times have you said in your life, I am a new creation? Hmm? I'm talking about the I am confession. If we want to be part of the God, remember the fullness of the God who dwells bodily in Christ Jesus, Colossians 2 verse 9. Verse 10, but you have this completeness or this fullness in him. So in Christ Jesus, I have everything that Christ has. So I got to say I am. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. You know, don't wish it. Oh, Lord, if I can just be the salt of the earth. Oh, Jesus, if I can just be the salt of the earth. And you never become it. You need to confess it. He already said it. You need to take it and confess it over your lips. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who hath blessed us say it before I write it huh I am blessed you see but how many times do you say it or how many times do you pray it okay response how many times do you say it and how many times do you pray it oh Lord bless me Oh, Jesus, bless my wife. Oh, Lord, bless my children. Oh, Lord, bless my car. Oh, Lord, bless my money. Oh, Lord, bless my bank account. Oh, Lord, bless my business. Standing in front of your business, putting your hands on the day. I am blessed, therefore my business is blessed. I am, hey, Romans chapter 4 tells us the whole story. How we are blessed with Abraham. How we are blessed with faithful Abraham. How we are blessed with believing Abraham. Come on, Galatians chapter 3 says, Unto, unto Abraham and his seed were the promise of the blessing made. Verse 16, not pointing to many seeds, but to one seed, that is Christ. Verse 29, but if we belong to Christ, then are we Abraham seed and heirs according to the promise what promise in blessing I will bless you in multiplying I will multiply you I am who hath blessed us with all all I remember when I first heard this theologi theological definition of all. Man, it really freaked me out. This guy was so learned with his two doctor's degrees in theology, and he, and he explained to us the whole theological meaning of all. He said it is. Okay. It was so mind-boggling to find out that after all the years of study theology, to find out that it means all, all spiritual blessings mm -hmm. in heavenly places. Now you see heavenly places, places are in italics, so it's not really there. In heavenlies or in the heavenly realm, says the Amplified Bible. In heavenly, in Christ Jesus. Oh. oh. I, I don't know about, oh, I am blessed. With all spiritual bliss. You can add on. In the heavenly. So, I am. Uh, Philippians says, our citizenship is in heaven. Uh, Ephesians 2 says, you who were dead in your trespasses and sin, he has freely forgiven you. Quickening you. Raising you up. Seated you together with Christ in heavenly places. So I am, Jesus stands in front of Nicodemus. Man, this is so cool. Nicodemus comes like a good Pharisee at night when nobody could see him. And he sneaks on on Jesus and he says, Master, we know that you are a man sent from God. For no one can do these miracles except God be with him. John chapter 3. Jesus turns around and he says, Nicodemus, you must be born again. He says, how can this be? How can I enter a second time my mother's womb? Nicodemus, if you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. How can I? Oh man, Nicodemus, you must be born from above. How on earth? He says, Nicodemus, you are a teacher of Israel. You struggle to believe what I'm telling you now. 
If I tell you earthly things, how much are you going to struggle if I start telling you heavenly things? He says, for no one has ever ascended into heaven except the Son of Man that came down from heaven who is in heaven. It's there. John chapter 3. No man came down from heaven or went into heaven except the Son of Man who is in heaven. So in other words, Jesus says, Nicodemus, do you see me operating? Now you say, no man can do these miracles except God be with him. So what is freaking you out is the miracles. Nicodemus, I'm going to explain to you how I do it. I am in heaven. Jesus, whoa, 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 whoa. You're standing right on earth. Nicodemus, you are a teacher. You know the scriptures. Do you not know that the heavens is my throne and the earth is my footstool? So if I have my feet on the earth, I am operating from a dimension of heaven. So my authority comes from the heavenly realm. So Nicodemus, you are a teacher, don't you know these things? So I am... Say it. Are you scared? You see, we're scared if we say that we're going to die tonight and depart. No, 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 no. Heaven is not a place to go to. It's a situation you find yourself in. Okay, so we are surrounded with this cloud of witnesses, but they are spirits. And one day they got to come back to get their bodies back. But I have the right and the privilege to have my body right now. So 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 says, may I pray, you know, may the God of peace, you know, and that stuff. He says that this God may sanctify you holy, that you will be preserved, your spirit Holy, spirit, soul, and body. Be preserved. Oh my goodness. In other words, stay a saint. Don't become a saint after death. Saint meaning holy and blameless. I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I must confess now I am a saint. I am in Christ Jesus. I am in heavenly places. I am that I am by the grace of God. Verse 4. Okay, according as he has chosen us. In him. Ah. 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 Is there more people in the house? I think, I think we should go. No. Should we go there, Lord? It can be long if we go there, but let's go there. John 15. John 15. Of course, but is all this stuff possible? Can we really confess this stuff? I think there's a scripture. And I'm sure I'm right when I quote it. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4 says, If ye then be risen with Christ. So, if. So you've got to decide, are you going to be the I am's? Or you are going to be the I will be's. You get New Zealand, you get the wallabies. But all across the world, you get the wannabes. I want to be. One day I want to be. It's time to come to a place where I am. I am. Not I am sick. I am healed by the stripes of you. Not I am weak. I am strong. Not I am struggling. I am more than a conqueror. Not I can't do it. I can do all things through Christ. I am. So if I start saying I am a saint, my ears start hearing my confession. I start believing something different than what I've been trained all my life. Hmm? Okay, we were in Colossians. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And do not seek the things on this earth. For your lives are hidden with Christ in God. 
When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. How are you going to appear with him in glory if you can't confess who you are in Christ? If you can't confess, I am a saint. I am in Christ. I am a new creation. I am strong. I am healed. I need to start confessing it. Verse 16. You have not chosen me. See, you should have screamed. But I have chosen you. So that takes the ugly eye out of the equation. And it puts the Christ eye right in there. And ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, He may give it you. Uh, but you see, we, we, oh, I don't know. I struggle to find out, am I really chosen? I just read it to you. You are chosen. Amen. And you know what? Then we, after we chosen, we struggle to bear fruit. Now imagine a fruit tree standing there in the back of your garden. It's full fruit time. It had its blossoms already. You know, you coming out in the morning and there's this awesome big peach tree in front of your back door. And you stop you. And you hear all these noises. And you look and the branches are crawling and creeping over one another. And the leaves are going up and down. And the buds are trying their best to push out the little fruit. And you say, what is happening? The fruit is I'm trying to bear peaches. I'm struggling to just get some peaches. Ooh. You see but Christians try their best to bear fruit. Jesus says, I have ordained you to bear fruit. I have chosen you to bear fruit. See, this is going to be tough. If I know I'm chosen, I am. Hey, you are ordained. To bear fruit. Christ has chosen you to bear fruit. You see, but where the struggle comes in is because of the rest of the chapter or the previous verses in the chapter. Let's read it. Chapter 15. I am the vine. I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman, amplified the vine dresser. Now, here comes the problem, in, and this is the key that set me free in 1981. Every branch in me say, I am in Christ. So, if I am a branch, and he is the vine, I am in the vine. Okay? Don't read on before you have it. Jesus says, I am the vine. The true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me. Are you in Christ? Okay, now he just used another word for himself. Instead of saying Christ, he says, I'm the vine. Instead of you being a Christian, he calls you branch. Same story. Just another flavor added to it. So, in Christ, I'm a Christian. In the sun, I become a sun. But in the vine, I am a branch. Okay, so every branch in me. So he's not talking about branches outside of him. He's talking about branches in him. Every branch, now this is going to release those who haven't heard the teaching yet. Listen to it tonight. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. Stop. What did we just read? I have chosen you and I have ordained you to bear fruit. 
Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So that every time you pray, your prayers will be answered. So when are my prayers answered? When I know I'm a fruit-bearing Christian. Okay? Now he says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Okay. Ah. Mm. So, 1981. Man, I'm struggling to bear fruit. Oh, Jesus. If I don't bear fruit, you're going to take me away. <sighs> it's in your Bible. Maybe you've heard a sermon. And people preach, my brother and my sister, if you don't bear fruit, I tell you, God is about to take the branches away that's not bearing fruit. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now, if we just read it, it seems like, oh my goodness, if I don't bear fruit, it's going to take me away. If I don't bear fruit, it's going to take me away. Till I looked at the words in the interlinear Greek lexicon. And this is what it says. The word taketh away there means to lift or bear up. Like when you get to a vineyard. And the bottom branches, you know, they prune at the bottom. But then the branches start hanging. And then they take it, they lift it up and tie it to wires or stuff they bind it up there that is the word every branch in me that beareth not fruit he comes and lift it up to help you to bear fruit he doesn't remove you he lifts you up ties you up make sure that your fruit doesn't fall to the ground oh man that was 1981 i was delivered. I was set free. I never tried to bear fruit again. I am ordained to bear fruit. I am in the vine. And if I don't bear fruit, he comes and lifts me up. Grace upon grace. And he says, son, if you missed it today, we give you another chance tomorrow. If you didn't bring forth fruit today, I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to pump you up and make sure by next week, if your same situation comes, you're not going to fail again. You're going to bear fruit. I have ordained you to bear fruit. Woo. I thought that was too much, man. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> and every branch that beareth fruit. Oh, now it comes to the ones that already bear fruit. He purges it that may it bring forth more fruit. Oh, I remember the sermons I heard. Oh, Lord, I was so condemned. Yeah. The preacher had a pruning knife and he had all these little vine sticks with him at the sermon and how God comes and, you know, if you don't bear fruit, you know, he takes you away and he cuts it off and throw it away. And he says, but if you bear fruit, don't think you're so smart because he's going to come and prune you. He says, and sometimes it hurts when God prunes you. And then he gives the invitation. Everybody that's been feeling the pruning of God lately, we're going to pray for you tonight that God will encourage you and help you to stay true to the faith. Even if it hurts, God says, I'm just pruning you, my son. The stuff that you're going through is a pruning process. Don't look at me like that. You've heard those sermons too. You are going through a pruning process and don't worry. Stuff happens to people. Stuff happens. I thought, you know, there's scriptures that says, uh, nothing shall hurt me, nothing shall harm me, no evil shall come near my dwelling place. I'm going for that life where nothing is going to steal, destroy, kill. I'm going for that life where nothing shall hurt or harm. I'm going for where all the angels are encamping around me. God is fighting for me. I'm standing and seeing the salvation of God. I'm seeing the destruction of my enemy on my left. That's the life I want. No, brother, stuff happens. And if stuff happens, it's God's pruning you. <laughs> then I looked at the word prune or uh, purge or prune. Some uh, newer English translation. He says, he, he cleans it. He cleans it up. So every branch that's already bearing fruit, he's cleansing it. And I said, yo, oh, good, no. Now we've got to find out how you clean it. The next verse. Now you are clean. It's the same word, purge. 
Same word prune. Now you are purged. Now you are clean. Through the word which I have spoken unto you. How? Through the word. If you struggle with what I'm telling you now, Ephesians 5.26 says, you know, talking about Christ and the bride of Christ, which is the church of Jesus Christ, he said he gave himself. He gave himself. Hmm? He gave himself for the church to sanctify it by the washing of the water of the word. Don't let it pass you by. You are already clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. Christ gave himself to sanctify, to wash, to cleanse us with the washing of the water of the word. That's why your mind is renewed when you start confessing the word. I am, I am, I am. I'm not going to receive this grace in vain. I'm, I am in the vine. I am a new creation. I am in Christ. I am a fruit bearing Christian. I am more than a conqueror. I am above and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed. I am in heavenly places. I am what he says I am. I gotta say it. John 17, I have given them your word. Cleanse them through your word. Your word is truth. Over and over. It's the word that cleans us. Not situations and circumstances. It irritates us. It's situations and circumstances doesn't change you. It shows you what you haven't got. It's the word that washes you. It's the word that changes you. It's the word that cleanses you. But you've got to be able to stand up and boldly declare, I am. Huh? Oh, we, we saw you. You are one of the Galileans. No, I, I am not. <laughs> no, I am not. Huh? I'm sure you Talk just like them. No, I am definitely not one of them. <laughs> Peter, oh my goodness, Jesus. How many cocks do you want to crow before you're going to say, I am? Huh? Let's go back to Ephesians. Huh? No cock is going to crow on my confession. Hmm? Come on, say it. No cock is going to crow on my confession. <laughs> Come on, they wanted to stone Jesus when he said, I'm a son of God. Yeah. And then he said, but does not your law say, I say you are God. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. What is that we've got to sing? Yeah. Instead of I'm a man of God, say, I'm a God. You are what? Oh no, he says. When are we going to start ruling if we never get that mentality? Huh? Huh? Some people don't rule over their own dogs in their own yards. I mean, it's terrible if your own dog bark at you in your own yard. Huh? And you sh and Fritzek and you know all the other adjectives that go with dog and it still don't listen, especially when there's visitors. Yeah, I don't know why he does it. He never does it, but now he do. Ah, yeah. Anybody else? Hmm? We want to rule the universe. We can't tell CB to sit still. Huh? But you want to call Mars and Jupiter to stand still and the sun and the moon and the weather patterns to change, but Sibi's. Oh, God help us. Verse 4. According as he has said, I'm chosen. Oh, I'm chosen. As us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy, holy. holy. 
and without blame before Him. He chose us in ah, to be holy and without He chose us to be holy and without blame. Oh, I wonder if we can write it. Have we got the guts? I am Okay, again, that just means I'm a saint. Are you saints? Hey, don't be scared. All Paul's epistles to the saints in Ephesus, to the saints in Galatia, to the saints, those who are called to be saints in Rome, to the saints in Colossia. Oh, but no, 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 no. First, the Pope must first die. <laughs> And then we first investigate how many good deeds he had. And then when his body has rested and been removed from one tomb to another, and he's now been sanctified, to glory, what the fight, and whatever they beautified him, then he can become a saint. The poor Sister Teresa, man, what an awesome woman of God. She was dead seven years before they decided they're going to now make her a saint. I thought that's a way she, oh, she was some saint walking there in Calcutta, India. Oh, I mean, oh, man, Mother Teresa, I mean. Uh, oh, they see, some of you can't even call Mother Teresa a saint. How are you going to call yourself a saint? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, brother, she was evil. Hey, watch it. That was an awesome woman of God. But the Catholic Church was dead seven years before they made her a saint. I decided I am a saint. Amen. I don't need no Pope to sprinkle me with no water. I'm a saint. <laughs> and if you struggle to be a saint, I will now make you a saint. In nomine Patri, Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Saints! 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 <laughs> Blessed. Thank you. Ordained to be saints. Colossians 1 verse 21. And you, just King James, and you, who were sometimes alienated. See? See? Tell Discovery Channel and National Geographic they don't have to look for the aliens. Any person that doesn't know Jesus, alien. There. Alien. You were aliens. <laughs> And enemies in your mind by wicked works. Listen, yet now hath he reconciled. Oh my goodness, I am reconciled. Ah, I am reconciled. Ah, means the books are made, everything is A-OK. -okay. It balances. I am reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death. There's the cross. Listen, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Mm, amplified Bible in the body of his flesh through death in order to present you. He chose you. He's presenting you. He died to present you holy and faultless and irreprovable in his presence. Hallelujah. Unblameable. Chosen, reconciled, I am. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Where were we? Verse 5. Uh. You see, you see, I, I can feel it. Because I'm spiritual, I feel it. I feel it. I feel the religious minds zapping through space right now. But how can I be blameless what I just did this afternoon, man? See, 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 see. Ah, we're still struggling with what happened this morning. Now I'm going to, I am blameless. 
I am faultless. I am sanctified. I am a saint. I am righteous. You know you're a creep, you wicked thing. How can you say I am this and I am that? Because he says so. Where I messed it up, he's going to lift me up and make sure that next time you're going to bear fruit. If you didn't make it today, there's another day coming. And what, you know, his mercies are new every morning. If I messed up all the mercies today, there's enough mercies for tomorrow. Ah! Oh. So you say a man can do just what he wants. Where did I say that? I have not said that once. Never. Not in one sermon. Neither did Paul. He said, does this mean I can go on sinning? He says, no, this means I can't go on sinning. Because there will be another driving force that says, "Mm, don't do that. Verse 5. Having predestinated us. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Ah. Predestined. Oh, so you believe in predestination. Are you from Calvin? Or from Luther? No, from Christ. Okay. Ah. Romans 8. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did, did. D I did, he did, did, did. Predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, <gasps> that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did for the third time predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say of these things? What shall I say? What shall we say of the fact that you are foreknown, predestinated, chosen, called? What are you going to say about this? Are you going to argue it? Are you going to say, I am predestinated. I am foreknown. I am called. I am chosen. I am a son of God. I remember years ago, years ago, (laughs) when the first videos came into the country, 1979, it was big stuff. They called it Umatic. It was big. The machine worked with a lever. It just didn't add paraffin. It plugged already. (laughs) Like a slot machine in a casino. Then the thing jumped. (laughs) Then you take the video and you've got to push it in. Then you've got to push that lever. And sometimes it didn't go in. And then it wound through. And then it hooked. Then you had to take the lid off and help it. And then it started jumping. Then you had a tracking device. Then you tracked it. That, you know, all the lines come over each other. And then you could watch a video. We went far in a few years. But there was this thing about predestination. Man, could this guy preach. You know? And he had the way of preaching. He had this beard, strong, muscular guy. And he said, predestinated is two words. Destiny and pre. Pre is a prefix. It's that comes before something else comes. Destiny is the end result where you're going. He said, so God saw your destiny. 
Now, maybe you've heard many people say it. I just remember it now. I heard it in 1979 when the videos came out. It wasn't my own. I got it from a video. Okay. <laughs> so, if you heard it before, I did too. I didn't bring it out. It was there in the Bible when the other preacher got it too. Okay, so, he said God had a destiny for you to look just like his son. To walk like his son. To talk like his son. He said, that's what you're going to be. You're going to look just like Christ. Walk like Christ. Do like Christ. Same works. Same voice. Same light. Same salt. Same everything. Then when God finished the result, he turned around. Then he went backwards. And he started before the cross. The foundation. Before the foundation. He said, now... This is what I predestined you for. Before anything happened on the cross, I already predestinated you. That's what you're going to be. But between here, the cross, and here when you look like Christ, you have grace and mercy. Multiply. But you see, what the church has put in this space was works. And we get dirty Christians. You see, when you tie an eagle down, it becomes a dirty bird. Because it's supposed to soar high in the sky, close to the sun. And because it's so high, the germs and the little leaves and stuff don't get time to, 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 to live on an eagle. But once you put an eagle in a cage, it becomes dirty very quickly. A Christian is supposed to be free. But when you tie him down, he becomes dirty. He does everything in secret and behind everything's back. And you know, he becomes dirty. And we need to get them to grace, to mercy. You are free. You are justified, sanctified, delivered, righteous. You are a saint, son of God. Where were we? I am predestined. I am predestined. Hmm? What was that other scripture? I am called. We got chosen, I think. We got chosen. Those we also justified. Hmm? Okay, then he says, to the adoption of children, I am adopted. Now that word adoption, again, if we look at our English vocabulary, we think adoption means you lost your parents, now you're getting a new papa, and they adopt you. <laughs> oh, I'm adopted, I'm adopted. That's, we have, that's why we have so many stepchildren in the church. Look at me, I'm going to explain now. We have, I think this is a revelation. The church is full of stepchildren because we think we adopted well, I'll try it again. The church is full of stepchildren. So they treat God like a stepfather because they think the stepfather has adopted them. The word adopted doesn't mean to go to an orphanage and adopt a child that hasn't got a parent. The word adopt in the Bible means to take from position of childhood and to place in a position of maturity. Okay? That's the word, to place. Okay? Galatians 4 explains it. You know, as long as the heir is a child, he differs nothing from a slave, but as under tutors and governors till the time appointed of the father. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman under the law, to redeem those that were under the law, so that we can receive the adoption, the placing of sons. And now that we are sons, God has put the spirit of his son in us crying my father my father is not a stepfather he's a father so I am adopted with the right meaning I am placed as a son from a child I am not an immature child that differs nothing from a slave I am a son that's supposed to be an heir so the minute I realize I'm adopted I know that I am an heir I am an heir I am more Galatians says I am a joint heir in other words, there is nothing that Christ will not keep away from you. Everything that is His is yours. Verse 6. 
to the praise of the glory of His grace. Wherein, I must close with this one. Wherein He hath made us accepted in the beloved. I am accepted. In the beloved. That means I am in the beloved. Seeing that we know now that adoption doesn't make us stepchildren. God is our father. Amen. We are real children of a real father. Amen. And I think we need to get rid of it. Say, I'm not a stepchild. I'm a real child of God the Father. Okay? Then it says, we are accepted in the beloved. Man, there's so many stuff that comes down to me now. So many people live a rejected life. Never mind a stepchild life. Get this church, in closing, I think it's a great point. People live and they always feel rejected. My mother rejected me. My father rejected me. My teachers rejected me. My, my friends rejected me. You know, children are very hard things. They can play on the playground and they can call each other ugly names. And some children don't have anything that'll hurt them. They can play, break the car, break the doll's leg off, throw it away, go play. We don't want you to be our friend. And you know, and Susie goes, they don't want me to be the friend. They don't want to be the friend. Five minutes later, come Susie, be my friend. But some children keep that stuff in their heart. We call it hurt. We call it offense. But tonight, in the sense we talk, we call it rejection. People come to Christ and they live in the church and they feel rejected all their lives and rejection makes you look for stuff. You look for something to satisfy the need of being adopted and not rejected. Placed as the son of God and accepted. Hey, I've got news for everyone in this house. You are already accepted. Yeah.